new gen anime something a lot of people love me being the latter of kind of like not really wanting to start new gen anime because it's just not finished or as polished as anime already out but i got bored and you know boredom hits kind of hard that being said heavenly delusion caught my eye and with it only being 30 episodes i was like shoot i'm gonna take a gonder man it can't hurt this vid won't contain heavy spoilers on it but i feel like to really get you hooked i will sprinkle some every now and again but if you don't want any type of spoilers at all then, you know, drop a like on your way out. But yeah, this is your warning. The visuals caught me so off guard. It's absolutely breathtaking. And I feel like it reminds me of Gravity Falls or a Steven Universe. And yeah, I know those are anime, but they are some of the more unique cartoons over here. And I feel like it's more like a refined version of them. We follow two characters, one named Kiriko and one named Maru. There's two goals in mind. Kiriko wants to find the doctor who performed an unwanted surgery on her body. Or should I say his body hmm how do wants to find heaven yeah kind of crazy but it's not that heaven heaven is actually some type of odd facility they keep kids in from the outside which is now inhabited by alien or creatures after the disaster that fell the planet so yeah this place basically is very dystopian abandoned buildings and monsters and creatures everywhere and occasionally some homeless Haru has the ability to kill the monsters, whereas other people kind of just struggle against them. But going back to the Heaven facility, things are definitely not what they seem. Sure, yeah, I mean, they're protecting the kids, but they're also running experiments and hiding the truth from the kids, who don't even know that the outside world exists, so yeah. They're basically sheltered to the max. A lot of the kids have peculiar attributes that make them stand out, like animal-shaped ears or oddly insane physical capabilities. And if you have a brain, you might be asking, who are the people that run the facility? What's their goal? Why is Maru the only person that can kill the man-eaters with some type of secret technique called the Maru Touch? Who the hell are the man-eaters and where do they come from? These are all questions that the show will steadily answer. But why I'm even talking about this anime today, bro, is really the fact that this anime is very subtle. And I love animes that don't hold your hand. Moments in the show don't feel rushed or ruin the seriousness of a moment. The best way to describe it, it's all natural. Even now now the main characters interact with each other, bro, I feel like it makes sense. Obviously, they sprinkle in some fan service moments and stuff like that. But Maru being 16 and going through puberty with awkward situations, I feel like, I mean, and plus, he doesn't know how to read, right? He was an orphan. Like, everything just seems to make sense and it's not just for comedy. They don't make characters stupid just to be stupid or make them get into random situations just because. People aren't any one way for any one particular reason, and that's what makes the show captivating. All right, so this is probably the only time I'm actually going to spoil something, like, actually, that could be a little major for people, because this, this section of the show is probably my favorite, and it shocked me every single time. So, you have been warned. Now, in my videos, I always like to say what I learned from watching an anime or reading a manga. And in this, the theme I keep seeing being overused is never be obsessed with one particular thing. This is shown throughout the show with multiple different characters being obsessed with becoming a leader, immortality, it ranges. But the example I want to use for this video is a character called Yuichi. In the show, they meet him after an earthquake, just scouting out, doing some random things. He looks pretty sketchy, but the more they talk to him, he seems like a nice guy, you know? They pay him for information, and he ends up giving them these stupid ghost stories. One of the stories ended up actually being true, and it was that he was trapped in a women-ruled society. In the society, they only needed men for one thing, reproduction. They would be slaves and only used for their pretty much sperm and also do the cleaning and washing in the house. Yuichi ended up getting one of the women pregnant and unfortunately he ended up having a boy. This boy was to be raised by the men to also grow up to be another reproductive slave. The women that had the baby with Yuichi actually ended up taking a liking to him and they planned to escape with the baby. As they go to make their escape, the two women actually got caught along with the baby and were executed. Yuichi kind of having a survivor's guilt, not knowing if his baby is still alive or not, ask Maru and Kiriko to go see if he's still alive. They go over to the facility only to figure out everyone there had been wiped out by a man-eater. As Kiriko is going to tell him the bad news, a group of men actually go to Yuichi and tell them that all the men from the society had survived. Only the women had been killed. Served them, right? There he goes and realizes that the men have been taking care of his kid. Should be a happy ending, right? He even gave Kiriko the keys to his car. But then, near the very end of this episode, 
very close to the credits too you could easily miss this part if you thought the episode was over you see the baby playing with some blocks and you see a little bit of blood on his face only to find out that Yurichi killed the man that helped raise his kid while he was away. This is something that Maru and Kiriko don't even know as they left with the car and thought they saved the day. Yurichi's reasoning for killing him was mainly because he was sure that the person that was raising his kid was the same one that alarmed the guards that got his two girls killed as well as almost getting his son killed. Though, if you really look at it, this isn't a valid reason for it because given the situations that they were in, I feel like the men probably would have gotten executed for not alarming the guards that someone was trying to escape. But to Yuichi, he didn't care. All he cared was having his son. That's all he cared about was his son. That was his one obsession. And that's what he got. And then nothing else mattered to him. And there's many characters like that. Many characters who may seem good on the surface, but they end up being bad. Or the other way around. Even characters that are painted out to be the bad guy that end up becoming the good guy. This show teaches you that there's many different sides to people and people do things for many different reasons. But the show will never tell you that or ever make it so obvious. Everything's so subtle and you really have to pay attention. The show shows maturity, man, and I like it. And it tackles a lot of dark themes and just a lot of just things that we question on a day-to-day -day basis in society. But yeah, I hope my video makes you want to check out this series, bro. It's really good. And like I said, it got me out of like a drought of not really knowing what to watch recently or just having anything that caught my eye. But Heavenly Delusion is fire, bro. And I can't wait for season two. This is actually my first scripted video, so I hope you really enjoyed it, especially as much as I enjoyed making it. Hit the like button, man. And I will keep letting you know more stuff I watch or read on this channel. And if you want more, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll always be here for y'all. Let me know what y'all are watching in the meantime. Love y'all, and peace.